Well, first off, you've been working on this documentary for uh, about a year or so. When did the idea first arise? The idea for Untouchable Crew came about probably in the later part of the 2010s. I had a conversation with Darren Jordan, um, one of the uh, members of the Untouchable Crew, and he was describing um, how the group actually formed and the way he described how it formed. And then the recruitment process, to me, just felt like a movie. He's an amazing storyteller. And the way he vividly described the occurrence and just the the motivations behind it, this crew forming, to me, just felt like a story had to be done on it. And I would have loved to have done a feature film, but uh, at this point in time, it's creating a documentary that helps tell their story in addition to uh, fleshing out some of the earlier, um, yeah, some of the earlier history of Edmonton hip hop. How easy or difficult was it to find information about the history of hip hop in Edmonton? You know, what's funny is that when I initially spoke with Barry Curtis, who was one of the brainchilds behind the whole Untouchable crew, um, he looked at at me with this look wondering, why do you want to do a story on the Untouchable crew? We were kids at that time, you know? And so I think that once those conversations started and you start asking, okay, who else do I have to talk to? It just became this web, this this whole uh, social network of people who were involved with the scene at that time or possibly involved with the crew. And so finding information wasn't difficult um, because a lot of these guys while some hadn't seen each other in close to 30 to 40 years, wow. they still had strong connections with each other. And so they just put me in contact with each person. Um, finding footage, however, that was difficult as at that point in time, there wasn't cell phones capturing everything. Uh, very few people had uh, VHS camcorders. So capturing uh the essence of that time period was very difficult in this documentary um, because of the fact that we didn't have vintage footage that we could go back to. We There was some stuff we were able to find, but not as much as we would have liked to. Right, right. Now, the Untouchable crew, uh, they're a breakdance group, obviously. And why do they figure prominently uh, in the history of hip hop in Edmonton? Well, what's fascinating is that they aren't necessarily the genesis of hip hop in Edmonton because it actually dates back to the 70s. Um, there was an earlier crew called uh, the Hitmen who um, were kind of the the introduction um, to breakdancing or at that point in time was locking um, or, um, yeah, locking was a thing that people were doing at that time. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I felt it was important to start with them was because of the fact that they are essentially the Avengers of Edmonton's breakdance scene. And as they went off to do their own things or form of the groups, um, they also were able to create a legacy that can be found in a lot of the hip hop artists that we have today, right? Myself, uh, Don Joyce is one of the people who mentored me. Um, Barry Curtis, his son, Kaz Mega, is a pillar in Edmonton's hip hop community. And so to me, starting with them was an opportunity to um, branch off from there and then allow for people to kind of get an understanding of who were the critical figures and then see where things go from there. Because the that way we could actually open up the story to looking at other people like Alistair Matthews, who went on to be part of the Maximum Definitive, which was a hip hop group from Edmonton, which got the uh, One of Much Music video award mm. back in 1993, in addition to being the first ever nominated for a Juno Award in 1993 as well, too. So, um, again, all these guys were connected to larger projects that, or larger um, initiatives that uh, kind of set the foundation for what we have today. Right. How open were they to you talking about their past and their stories? Very open. Um, some of them, it was hard for them to remember certain things. And uh, I would do pre-interviews with them to kind of jog their memories. And through those pre-interviews, I was able to gather information. And then, um, yeah, they were, they were really open. And what was even more fascinating is that once I got them all together in the same room and we had a reunion for them and we actually had a few other gatherings as well, too. And we just let them talk and catch up. And again, some of them hadn't seen each other in 30 to 40 years. Right. And once those conversations began to just spill out, then now we were able to fill in some of the gaps because some people remember one thing and then all of a sudden they hear somebody else talking about it's like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. they'd fill in a little bit more. So they were, yeah, very open to sharing their stories. Uh, lastly, how has the early wave of Alberta hip hop and uh, inspired you as an artist? And also uh, now knowing the Untouchable crew, how has that inspired you? It's inspiring because, uh, or it has inspired me, I should say, because of the fact that um, 
it allows me to gain context to where I come from, right? Growing up, an older cousin of mine used to play hip hop cassettes around the house all the time. And that was how we were introduced. And through doing these interviews, I began to find out that these people also know my cousin. So now a lot of these things begin to, because Edmonton was a very small place at the time. So everyone knew everyone. And so I began to understand my origin story from talking with them. And the fact that these guys were able to build something out of nothing at that time period then allows me to realize that with all these tools that we have now, there's no reason why we can't build a thriving hip hop community here, you know? And so that in itself is inspiring because we take so many things for granted nowadays and, and say that if we had this, if we had that, but literally these guys were able to come together, find a meeting ground, be able to um, form this super group, were able to um, compete in competitions and develop their skill level to the point that when there were crews coming from the U.S., like some of them would actually be challenged by what was coming out of Edmonton. And that is inspiring because it's just like we've always been good. We just have to recognize that and support that and 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 give it a platform, you know? So the documentary is coming out on Saturday. Uh, if people go, what will you, what uh, will they expect? It's you could be screening the documentary. Anything else going on? Yes, we're also hosting a panel discussion where um, Bobby T, who is a local influencer here, is going to be interviewing the crew um, and getting a better understanding of who they are and what the scene was like at that time. We're also going to open up the floor for anybody in the audience to ask questions because um, this is the first time that um, our scene has ever been, uh, I guess, gifted with the opportunity to actually connect and ask questions about like so what was it like back in that time period and so while i've been fortunate to sit down with people um sit down with these guys there might be questions that i didn't think of that Mm -hmm. might be able to be asked and there'll also be people who are from that time period who will be able to ask those questions that help paint a better picture in regards to what was happening at that time Um, we're also going to have a dj spinning dj sunny grounds from cjsr will be there um, we're going to have some finger food and also just allow for kind of like a meet and greet opportunity to happen where um, the B-boys of the time can actually meet some of the younger people who are currently practicing hip hop, whether it be through DJing, graffiti art, B-boying, B-girling or MCing.